down, settle down. Look, we might have just won the election, but I want to make sure we win the next one too. So let's dive into it. So tell me, what do we really need to hit hard to make our mark these first few months? Child poverty. Good, yes, that's a big one. Mm. What else? Carbon emissions. I heard a lot about that too. Uh, sugar tax. Controversial, but worth talking about. Put it on the list. What if we made a law about being able to marry your wife's sister? Uh, Talk about that. Do you want to elaborate on that one? Yeah, no, of course, of course, of course. Thanks for asking. So, um, so we do a law, right, where it's fully legal to marry the sister of your current wife. Is that even a crime? Uh, yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, yeah, I looked it up, Buzzy, yeah. What should I write down for that? Right, wife's sister marriage legalisation act. Maybe just marriage law review. Okay, right, what else? Housing? Yes, I'm glad somebody brought that up. I definitely think that we should do something about housing. Or at least say we're going to do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of houses, <laughs> my wife's sister's house is literally just around the corner from ours. So, I mean, <laughs> if we were to get married, I mean, she wouldn't have to move that far. Seems pretty obvious to me. Sorry, Leroy, is, is your wife okay? Is she sick or something? No, 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 just, no, no, just something I've been thinking about. Ah. Okay, well, it's on the board. Yep. So have you got anything else? Hmm... No, no, I think that's about it. Sorry about that, boss. Right. Now, what else can we do to show the New Zealand public that we've been listening? What? Hang on. How do you know that your wife's sister actually likes you? What? Well, like, if you propose to her, how do you know that she'd actually say yes? Bro, what are you... She gives me hugs. I... She let me borrow her car. Mm -hmm. And she kisses me on the cheek when she says goodbye. But that doesn't mean that she necessarily likes you. Like, likes you, likes you. I mean, I've got a way to find out. If you want to know, I'd love to. Okay then. What's her name? Her name's Jennifer. Well, you better hope this lands on Jay then. A. B. C. D. E. F. G. H. I. J. J. We are the government of New Zealand, not a bunch of rowdy school children. Look, as soon as Parliament opens, we will do the Wife's Sister Marriage Legalisation Act, OK? Now, can we please move on? Sorry, miss. Thank you. Now, have you got any more apples? Yeah, I do. I'd just like to check if there's somebody that's got a crush on me. Yeah, yeah. And well, do you have a name? Yes, but I'm not telling. OK, then. A. a B. C. Dude. That might sound crazy, but in 1880, we actually did pass a law called the Deceased Wife System Marriage Act. You can do pretty much whatever you want when you're in power. Welcome to season two. It's me. The citizen Hi, Hockey Mai, and welcome back to the Citizen's Handbook, the show where a small man is trapped in a room and isn't allowed to leave until you understand how New Zealand works. For those of you who missed the first season, don't worry. I'll wait here while you go and watch it. Wow! What a good series. I hope you liked it. And even if you didn't, don't worry. Keep watching. It's going to be completely different this time. This series is about how to change New Zealand, which means if you think New Zealand is perfect, please stop watching. Once again, we spoke to some of the smartest people in New Zealand about how to change stuff, like these people. And they told us all about how to protest, strike, boycott, occupy, teach, learn and organise. But before we get to all of the stuff outside the system, it turns out that there are people within the current system who are literally paid to change the rules. It's their whole job. So that's where we're going to start, because sometimes those people get things done. Here's a story of when they had success taking insult away from injury. This is the story of ACC. 
Once upon a time, if you got injured and you wanted real cash to pay your hospital bills and pay rent while you couldn't go to work, you would have to find someone to blame and sue them in a court of law, which was expensive for everyone involved and tough for injured people because they had to fight legal battles while they were injured. And if you couldn't find someone to blame, you didn't get anything at all. But sometimes people in government use their power to make life better. The people in the Ministry of Labour did their job and told their minister that the system sucked. And the Minister of Labour did his job and set up a royal commission. And the royal commission did their job too. This absolute ledge called Owen Woodhouse ran the royal commission and talked to a bunch of smart folks and then he wrote a report that was like, Hey everyone, uh, we're just going to invent an entirely new system. It should be illegal to sue for personal damages and we'll just put money in a big pot. And if you get injured anywhere at any time and you need cash, you'll get it. And politicians listened and the national government put into place the new system and Labour expanded it. And pretty soon we had ACC. Nobody asked for it, nobody knew what the solution should be. But there was a problem and if the right people are in power at the right time, then they can fix problems. And that right person might be you. The end. So let's break down the different jobs in the system that let you change the rules. If you want a good shot at changing the rules, you might be interested in applying for a job as Prime Minister of New Zealand. As Prime Minister, you get to decide the government's priorities. So if you want a law to change, you've got a pretty good chance of making it happen. Now if that seems out of reach, you can be in the cabinet. Cabinet is all the people in charge of various ministries or departments like the Ministry of Health, Justice and Silly Walks. It's like being in the most powerful group chat in the country. If you're not the Prime Minister or in Cabinet or even in Government, then for the love of God at least be a Member of Parliament. There's 120 of them. As an MP outside of Government, you get to vote on proposed laws and sit on select committees and you can put forward your fun law idea as a Member's Bill. Now it's not quite that simple. The real diagram looks more like this. But we just don't have that kind of time. So if you're extremely hardworking, well connected, passionate about changing laws and good at public speaking, becoming a politician might be the right path for you. To do that, the easiest route is probably 1. Get into university. 2. Join a youth wing of your preferred political party or become involved in student government. And 3. Get a job for a politician until you get shoulder tapped and the party helps you run an electorate campaign or they put you on the party list. Or, if that all seems too hard, why not just become rich and famous and see what happens? But you might not want to be a politician because you've seen how people talk about politicians on the news and it seems horrible. Instead, you might want to join the public service. MPs need lots of advice when they're trying to pass laws, so you could be one of the people that tells them that their idea is stupid and they should feel bad about it. Fun! If you want to be an important person in the public service, then I'm afraid you, you probably still have to go to university, where you'll study a specific area of expertise that you care about, and or public policy, and or just know someone in government and get them to give you a job. It really will make the whole thing a lot easier. So congratulations, you're one of the people that make sure our government passes good laws. You've changed the rules of society. Problem solved. After all, laws are fixed rules that never change and don't require any interpretation, right? Wrong! I mean, come on! You knew that was going to be wrong. Didn't you hear how sarcastic I sounded? Pay attention! No, unfortunately, laws have to be carefully interpreted by human beings. And you could be one of those human beings. That's right. It's time to become a law nerd. There are two key ways that law nerds can change the rules. Law reform and precedent. The legislature, which is a fancy term for all the people who write and pass laws, is in constant dialogue with the judiciary, which is a fancy word for courts and stuff. Pushing for law reform just means being a smart law nerd and telling the legislature they should rewrite some of the laws in their big book of laws or write some new ones. But the big book of laws isn't the only thing that judges take into account when they're making a decision in a courtroom. They also take into account precedent, which is made up of all the decisions that judges have made before them. If you're a litigator, then you can deliberately pick cases to set a new precedent. Natalie Coates argued that people should be allowed to have their convictions overturned even after they're dead, because being considered guilty, even when you're dead, still affects your manner. 
The Supreme Court agreed, and now that's part of common law. It's a precedent that future judges will take into account. As a lawyer, you also get to write contracts that define relationships between people and organisations. That's a way to change the rules of society. You can even become a judge, getting to interpret the law yourself, setting precedent every time you do, and wearing a big fluffy wig. I mean, it'll be difficult if you're not a rich old white guy, but it is possible. <laughs> but what if you don't think the legislative or the judiciary is your cup of tea? Well, don't panic. There are so many other ways to change the rules outside the halls of power. This is just episode one. We've got a whole series coming. You're in for a treat. We're talking campaigning, protesting, journalism. -ing. But we'll get to that next time. See you soon. I'll just, I'll wait, I'll wait here. Citizens Amble. Okay. The citizens. You can cut now.